we're going to move on. So why do we worry about um, descriptive statistics? Well, it's often the first step in any type of research that you're doing. So, you know, in, in my area, I'm in public health, I do a lot of work with blood pressure. So if I just told you, yeah, we, we did a, you know, we had, you know, the average blood pressure was, you know, 120 over 80. Or if I said, yeah, we had a 10 point drop in blood pressure, you would go, okay, I need more information. You know, what are the, you know, the, the age, the ethnicity, uh, I need more information to really be able to understand these data. So that's really why we do descriptive statistics. And we can do it in two ways. We can do it with numbers, numerically, and we can also do it graphically. Just a couple of basics before we get started. Uh, you may hear the term parameter or the term statistic, just to differentiate. A parameter is the whole population. It's an absolute number. Okay, so if we're looking at data from everybody born in the United States, you know, anytime you say everybody, um, then that's a, that's a parameter. A, a statistic, on the other hand, is a sample. So you usually don't have the opportunity to test the entire population or to test the parameter. What you're doing is you're, you're doing statistics. You're taking a sample and then you're trying to infer from that sample back into that parameter. Another point is um, discrete versus continuous. So discrete observations are uh, nominal and ordinal measures. Uh, they can be dichotomous <coughs> as well, excuse me. So an example, uh, gender is dichotomous. There's two uh, options and only two, male and female. Uh, a nominal observation would be maybe ethnicity. So there's white, black, Hispanic, Asian, other, you know, mixed. There's, so they're, they're names. They're not associated with numbers. They're names. And an example of an ordinal, they're in an ordered set. So maybe age groups. So, you know, birth to age 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. Those are in an ordered set. So they're still groups rather than numbers but they kind of have a sequence to them. Continuous variables um, obviously have numbers associated with them. So you can actually run you know, means and standard deviations, and you can break those data down into even smaller and smaller units. With discrete, you can't get any smaller unit than male and female. But if you're looking at you know, height, you could be measuring it in feet, in inches, and in centimeters and so forth. So we generally have what we call summary statistics and we start with measures of central tendency. The most common are the mean or the average, the median, which is the middle value, and the mode, which is the most common value. We also have, um, you know, if, we're, if you have discrete statistics, then you can use um, frequency distributions rather than, than um, central tendency. So the ten central tendency, again, the, the most common ones are the mean, the median, and the mode. Um, the most common is the, the mean or the average. We use those kind of, um, you know, is, is this, the same meaning. And those are, real, those are designed for continuous variables. So you have to be very careful in your data set. If you're coded, if your data set is coded, so maybe you have ethnicity, and it's one for white, two for black, three for Hispanic, or the same thing with, with gender. If you have one for male, two for female, you wouldn't want to run you know, a mean uh, and standard deviation of that. It wouldn't give you any, you would, it just wouldn't give you any valuable information. In that case, you would want to run a frequency table or do a graph or a chart. So again, starting with basics, most of you know what an average or a mean is, but basically you take all of the samples, you add them all up, and you divide by the number. So in this example, there's 10 numbers. We add them all up, they add up to 360, there's 10 of them, so we divide by 300, or divide by 10, and we get an average of 36. So that's pretty simple. 
the next one is the median. So the median is the middle value. So why would we use a median instead of a mean? Well, and I used this in the last example, but let's say we were, let's say you were a classmate with Bill Gates, maybe in high school, and you wanted to look at the average income of people in your class. Well, if you did an average because he's a billionaire, then the average income would be probably still in the millions or hundreds of millions even, depending on the size. And you know that probably wouldn't be a very accurate representation of your class. So what you would use then as a median, you would take the middle value uh, in that to get to get your, your data. And then lastly, the mode. So the mode is the most common value. And again, it's not used as often, but depending on the, the distribution, you may have what's called a bimodal distribution. That means there's two, two humps in the, in the curve. There's two areas that are common. And maybe it's not in the middle. Maybe they're on the end. It would be a reflection of not having necessarily a normal distribution. Okay, so if you have an abnormal distribution, a mode might be, be something to look at as well. So here's an example of a distribution, our, our typical bell-shaped curve. And we have the vertical line in the middle. In a normal distribution, you can see that the, the mean, the median, and the mode are all the, the exact same number. Okay. Um, if you didn't have a normal distribution, that's where you might have you know, differences where you would use a, the median or the mode. And then the, the other vertical lines to the, to the right and left represent the standard deviation or the variance in that sample. So not every, excuse me, not every distribution is normal. You can see in the graph on the left, this is a skewed distribution. It's skewed to the left. Most of the values are to the left of the median. Um, the example to the right, that would be an example of a bimodal distribution. So uh, if you just ran a, a, a number set there, um, you, know, you might get different values. But knowing that you have, you literally have two different bell-shaped curves that are kind of superimposed on one another. Take a moment here to let you catch up. That's, um, those are measures of central tendency. Um, what makes statistics fun then is to look not only at the central tendency, but then also to add to that the measures of dispersion. So examples would be the standard deviation, the variance, the standard error, and the range. So again, with the um, measures of central tendency, we're looking at, you know, you may you know, have a, a, a mean or an average, but what you really want to know, and in a lot of our statistical tests, if you're running, say, a t-test or an analysis of variance, what it's doing then is looking at the spread in those values. So you could have two different um, sets of, of numbers um, with the same average or the same mean, but have very different uh, standard deviations or very different uh, variability among those, those data. That's important to know, and that's really how we determine whether maybe two groups are statistically significantly different from one another. So the variance produces a summary of the dispersion of the, or the spread of the data, okay? So it's calculated it's calculation of variable uh, differ on how the data is distributed. So again, the more variability in the data, the greater the standard deviation and the greater the variance uh, in that population or in that sample. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Okay, so the easiest way to remember uh, which is squared and which is not is that while the variance is the measure of the overall variability, the standard deviation is the average or standard 
variability. So it's literally the standard deviation is the average var variance from the mean in that in that in that sample. Sometimes you also hear the, the term standard error of the mean, and that's actually different than the standard deviation. Okay, So the standard deviation is the, the average variance from the mean in your sample. What the standard error is looking at is the, okay, if you did a sample and you had a mean and standard deviation, and then you went out and took another sample and did another mean and standard deviation, how close would those would those two be? And if you kept doing that and kept doing that and kept doing that, you know, how how much of a variability would you get? I used the example last time we just did a, a poll with doing heads and tails, you know, flipping a coin. And you know, while it's you know the it should be 50% heads and 50% tails, there is always going to be some variability, so it might be 55, 45, or it might be, you know, 52, 48. So every time you do it, there's going to be some variability. And again, depending on the, you know, the type of data you're looking at, um, you know, you may have more or less variability there. Uh, and you can correct for this um, with just large numbers. So the the greater the number, we have another term called the central limit theorem. So the more data you add to your sample, the more the data is going to kind of regress towards the mean. So again, here's our variation. Here's our bell-shaped curve with our distribution. And here's, so we have two different data sets, same mean. But in this case, greater variability, greater variation.